Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing what might be the most underrated Omega watch in the Western markets. The East already knows about the Omega Griffin Claw constellation and has for quite some time, but we often underrate one of the pillars of the traditional Omega brand. It's not a Seamaster, it's not a Speedmaster, and thank goodness for that, because the constellation on my wrist, 38 millimeters in stainless steel and red gold with integrated bracelet, is the closest thing you can get to an Omega Royal Oak. It truly feels that it's drawn from the same aesthetic tradition as well as standard of build quality. On my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, you can see that the case 38 millimeters in diameter doesn't wear like a conventional 38. It's very much in the tradition of the cushion cases of the 1970s. The watch measures a remarkable distance across the wrist. Remarkable because it's so short. 44.8 millimeters from pivoted end link to pivoted end link. That's the span of this watch, making it viable on wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. It's thin too, 12.6 millimeters thick with a sloped case plank, easily fit this watch underneath a dress sleeve cuff. Now the timepiece is very solid and quite substantial. I almost have visions of old Piaget Polo bracelets or Omega lobster tail bracelets when I look at this integrated bracelet on the 2009 model year Connie, and that is what you're looking at. You're looking at the 2009 model year Constellation family. You can see how each individual link is scalloped to accept the pivoted barrel shaped flexible member in the center, and that, that pivot, and you can see on the underside, allows no daylight to show through. Normally this would be a recipe for pinching skin or pulling hair, but I've been wearing this one around the office and I felt nothing of the sort. This thing is a little piece of stainless steel alchemy. The way it fits, the way it feels, it's absolutely comfortable. It does feature a twin trigger double deployant, and it is a sequential clasp, so you do have to close one side before the other. You'll also note that there's a handsome diversity of polish about this bracelet. You have a polished interior clasp and then entirely satin finished links. And we're going to get as close as we can here so you can appreciate the difference between the satin finished vertical striations of the side and the horizontal striations of the top. Normally a bracelet will be brushed in a linear fashion down towards the clasp or up towards the case. Here all of the satin finish is actually horizontal and there are small polished barrel shaped pivots in between. It's surprisingly subtle and remarkably beautiful. Turning it all back to the case side, I should emphasize that although this is the 2009 model year constellation, the Griffin Claw design seen here was first proposed in the 1982 Manhattan style constellation design and technically this is still the Manhattan constellation. The timepiece with a combination of polish and satin, stainless steel and gold is dramatic and you can see the forms are not easy to describe or resolve. There's a flatted surface but capped by an arc that unites the case band from side to side and what appears at first glance to be the lug hood is actually a tapered junction with the bracelet and you can see how perfectly integrated that curve is with the swell of the bracelet and the flattened form of the bracelet. And then there's a somewhat barrel shaped or vaulted uh, case top that features its own satin finish that runs horizontally. On the edges you can see that there is a vertical satin finish and then polish about the griffin claws that retain the bezel. The bezel itself featuring a stylized form of engraved Roman numerals that can be read outboard of the applique rose gold hour indices on the dial. A sunburst in silver you can see on the dial absolutely bewitching, especially since if you look carefully you can see that the origin point of the sunburst is actually the star at 6 o'clock. It's not the center of the dial. This watch absolutely rife with pleasing details. There is a black on silver print. We're going to get as close as we can now and afford ourselves a little bit more light to appreciate some of these details. But it is a remarkably dynamic dial. Thanks to the wasp waisted faceting of those indices, you can see that they're narrow at the center and they flare at their edges. So not only are they faceted, not only are they polished, but they're unconventional in their form. At center, a sort of tapered dauphine hand. It's not a conventional dauphine. It's broad at the center and then the swell diminishes with a sloping graceful arc uniting in the tips of the minute hand and hour hand. Lancet style counterweighted seconds hand with a trapezoidal applique rose gold window for the date. Rose gold applique omega marquee. Uh, the crown is a push down but the watch is 100 meters water resistant. Display case back sapphire style caliber 
8,500. For 2009, the Constellation gained the 8,500. Twin main spring barrels for even torque release from maximum to minimum wind. 60 hour power reserve. A free sprung balance with a full balance bridge for shock resistance. This was before the silicon hairspring, but the watch is a coaxial chronometer featuring the exotic tangential contact George Daniels tri level coaxial escapement. Very precise long-term timing stability, and reduced long-term maintenance needs. It features both hacking or stop seconds, as well as a clever time zone function that allows you to actually move the hour hand forward and backwards, including crossing the international date line. You can see how it can drive the date in both directions. 25,200 vibrations per hour. This is the most unconventional of modern Omegas. And if you don't hail from an Eastern watch market, you hardly ever see one. You need to consider it because it's a secret winner, a stealthy champion. See it, make it yours on the watch box. Omega Constellation.